Guys, I don't want to start this off somber, but every character from the classic children's film, The Land Before Time, <laughs> is dead. Hi. Okay, that was weird. I just needed to get my iPad. Well, what did I say? I don't know what happened. <laughs> We're all doing great. Don't worry about it. I know what it looked like. You guys are looking at me. Don't worry about it. I know what this look says. I look like a narc at a Jimmy Buffett concert. <laughs> you guys parrot heads or something? What's going on? Where's the drugs? I know they're here. That or like, I, I look like a like a Jamba Juice bouncer. <laughs> Just outside mean mugging people. Get in there. You look pale, you need some ginseng. No rough housing. Come in there, don't make me. Okay, one more, you want one more? Cool. Um, I look like I constantly forgot to pick my son up from karate practice. <laughs> They have no idea where Brandon is. <laughs> it's a good thing he knows karate. <laughs> okay, even one more? Okay, cool. Um, what if my whole set was just this? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Psych, it totally is. No, um, what's the one more? Here we go. I look like the Beach Boys boy. <laughs> They're all my dad, every single one. All of them. Well, fused together Voltron style, and here I am. Uh, <laughs> where do we start? Uh, does anybody like Star Wars in here? So one, two, three people will like this joke? All right, cool. Um, <laughs> huge fan of Star Wars. I'm really excited about the new movie coming out. Is anybody else really excited? Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. J.J. Abrams might do okay with it. Who knows? It's gonna be great, but it coming out made me remember my favorite Star Wars story. I want to share that guys with, with you. Share that guys with you. Words. Sure. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you guys don't remember, like a few years ago, they tried re-releasing all the Star Wars movies in theaters, but in 3D. Because that's what we wanted. And super intelligent, they started with episode one. That was the one they were going to get us all <laughs> interested in. You remember that piece of crap? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one they started with. My roommate and I were super excited to go see it, though, and we remembered, we're like, oh, it's Star Wars. There's going to be lines, right? That's how that goes. It doesn't matter. And we go, <laughs> we go out to 82nd to this movie theater, and there's nobody there. <laughs> nobody at all. Except for two people in the parking lot fighting a stop sign <laughs> with plastic toy lightsabers. <laughs> And they're wearing outfits which looks like they're they're completely made out of sweatpant. And the stop sign's winning. Like, <laughs> like just winded, like <gasps> just hitting it. We go inside the place. The lobby's empty except for again, just two people. It's a super nerdy guy wearing, and I'm talking like stereotypical nerd from a movie, like button-up shirt, like glasses with a tape, no shit. Weird. He's standing next to a man wearing the most elaborate, movie-quality Darth Vader outfit I've ever seen in my life. Glossy, just beautiful. So the nerdy guy looks at us and he's like, Would you like... And th that's his voice, for real. I didn't like, I'm not making that up for this joke. He's like, Would you like a photograph with the Dark Lord of the Sith? <laughs> just kind of stare at him for a while and I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> no, I want two of those. Give me, <laughs> let's do this. We get a photo with Darth Vader. We go into the theater. We sit in the back. And then we notice in front of us there's just like a row of 13-year-olds. And we're like, okay. And we decide that we're just going to mystery science theater the movie. Because <laughs> it's old. Why not? Just shout stuff. Before the movie starts, though, that nerdy guy runs out in front of the screen. He's like, before the movie starts, we have a special guest who'd like to make a few announcements. 
And then Darth Vader huffs his ass down to the front of the screen. <laughs> and he walked like this so you could tell like what person was in the suit. It was like, it was like. <laughs> it's like picture Darth Vader doing that. He gets to the front of the screen and then says nothing for like 10 minutes. Just kind of stares at us. And then unsheaths his little toy plastic lightsaber at his waist. It goes like this. <laughs> like nothing cool, no cool moves. Just kind of wiggles it. And then leaves, like just goes, didn't say a word. And so I just shout out, You're not even in this movie! <laughs> Technically, he's not, he's a little kid in the movie. <laughs> movie starts, I'm shouting stuff. The 13 year olds are beginning to become very perturbed. They're very upset. They're shouting things at me, I'm shouting things at them. Like they're just shouting, and I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry, am I ruining it? This movie came out in 1999. <laughs> And then it occurred to me that they're 13. This is their Star Wars. This one. So then I just felt like really sorry for them, so I started shouting like encouraging things. I'm going, it's okay, Jar Jar dies in the end. I'm excited for it, it's going to be fun. I like to be a kid. Anybody like being a kid? I mean, clearly look at me right now. It's like a seven-year-old exploded. Uh, there's one more. I guess that was one more, what I look like. Cool. Just check that off the list. Add them to the repertoire. Is that a word? Okay. Um, <laughs> I love being a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, like, kids always had that thing they wanted to be when they grew up, and it was always ridiculous. Like, I wanted to be a superhero like a lot of kids, but I didn't base the superhero that I came up with off of like established superheroes. Like I didn't have super strength or anything, like, or I wasn't Batman or Superman. I based my entire superhero persona off the fact that I have a mole in my belly button. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's real. I could show it to you, but I don't want to like scar anybody for life. There's a mole in my belly button. And I did that because it like scared my sister and grossed her out, and I just thought like it would work on criminals. <laughs> Like, I just go and tackle them and then, like, show it to them. They'd be like, ew! You're right, I'm done forever <laughs> doing crime. Other thing I wanted to do when I grew, grew up, I just wanted to be, like, really good at yo-yo. That was it. <laughs> but there's no jobs for people that are really good at yo-yo, you guys. That's not a thing. I remember in middle school, a yo-yo troupe came to my school. Did anybody else experience this? Isn't that crazy? What is that weird thing? Just a like yo-yo troupe, like a bunch of kids came. They were like an overly excited improv troupe. They were just like flipping yo-yos around. Kids are freaking out. And then everybody had to buy yo-yos. And then a weird class division happened in the school where all the rich kids had all the sweet-ass yo-yos that did tricks by themselves. And I'm over here with an $8 Duncan. I hate you, Tom Jeffries, wherever you are. I made that name up. I don't know who the hell Tom Jeffries is. I gotta imagine that's what happened, like, sitting in the audience, there was just some kid, though, like, sitting there watching the yo-yo troupe, and he's like, oh my god, this is what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life, this right here. Because there's no jobs, there's no jobs. And then I thought about it, superhero, you could be a superhero that's just really good at yo-yo, and then before you beat people up with yo-yos, you just say the name of a trick as a pun, and then you're awesome. Like, for instance, some dude's running away after he stole a purse. Oh, a cat burglar, eh? Looks like I gotta walk the dog. I'm sick of him. <laughs> or like, uh, <laughs> you get surrounded by ninjas, as you do. Everybody knows. You get surrounded by ninjas, and you're like, oh, surrounded, huh? Well, good thing I brought my passport, because it looks like I gotta go around the world! <laughs> or you go, you go into like a, <laughs> like a base or whatever, and there's like a drug deal going down or something shady, and it's in the darkness, but just like all the dudes are in the one spotlight, and you come out of the darkness, and you're doing that move where you like rock the yo-yo back and forth, right? And you just come up, and you're like, don't wake the baby and then you just beat everybody up <laughs> that's so dumb <laughs> does anybody remember the show Nickelodeon Guts okay so three people once again are going to like this show uh, I love that show if you guys know what Nickelodeon Guts was it was a show where they 
made children fight each other and climb a Faberge mountain. It was beautiful. It was a wonderful show. If you climbed the Faberge mountain at the end of the show, you won a, a, a glowing piece of the mountain called the crag. It was just a glowing piece of the crag. I want that. <laughs> like more than I've wanted anything in my life. I've searched eBay countless times for this goddamn thing. And I want it, and I want it just like on my mantelpiece, right? Just there, so that when people come over, they'll be like, oh my god, is that a piece of the crack? Because that's the type of people I'd have come over to my house. <laughs> and I'm messing around. And I'm like, yeah, totally. And they're like, weird, I don't remember you being on the show. <laughs> yeah, oh man. Um, that is because I was on the season um, where a kid died. <laughs> Yeah, they couldn't air it. Yeah, it was uh, messed up. Uh, so he was, we were climbing the crag right at the end, um, and he hit one of the activators, one of the buttons, and he was hit in the face with a fatal amount of glitter. Just a fatal amount. And as he was blinded by the glitter, he was crushed to death by a giant foam boulder. And as the paramedics tried to help him, I just, go, I just went to the top. I won. I got it. It's there. It's mine. <laughs> um, I like Disney movies too. Disney movies are real fun. We all like Disney. Okay, one person. All right, just gauging everybody. I like I, I like watching Disney movies, but I like to do it uh, when I'm real stoned. We don't really like doing that one. That's fun. I like to smoke so much weed that like settings on the microwave make me giggle. <laughs> you know, you're just like <laughs> potato. <laughs> I'm not, even, I'm not even eating a potato. <laughs> um, but I like to watch Disney movies, but when I do that, I like to overanalyze them. Um, so if you guys are okay with it, I'm just going to overanalyze some Disney movies right now. Is that cool? All right. That's why I have the iPad. I wasn't just like bragging that I have an iPad. Generation one. <laughs> you guys like the case? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Kind of sucks though if you shake it, all the songs delete. <laughs> <laughs> the best joke, you guys. <laughs> all right, uh, who likes Aladdin? You guys like Aladdin? Yeah. All right, this is a wonderful movie. Uh, I thought about it a, a lot though. The very first time you see Jafar, the villain of the movie, you know this guy right here? Okay, the Sultan guy is like, ah, Jafar, my most trusted advisor. This guy? <laughs> that guy's your most trusted advisor. He's a snake staff, people. <laughs> Don't trust people with snake staffs. That is a very basic rule, okay? There's another scene where Abu, the little monkey friend of Aladdin, breaks him out of prison and he does so with a bobby pin and a lock. Where do you get the bobby pin? He's just rolling down to the Agrabah Claire's, picking a few up. <laughs> These are smart jokes, people. Don't worry about them. <laughs> Why did you zoom in? What are you doing? We're figuring this out. Don't worry about it. Next up, 101 Dalmatians. Who likes this film? It's a terrible movie. I'll tell you why. <laughs> All right? The villain of 101 Dalmatians, this terrible nightmare right here. Okay? She doesn't want to kill people. Like, she doesn't want to take over the world. She doesn't want money because she already has it. She just wants to murder 99 puppies and make a coat out of them. That's it. We're, like, showing this movie to children. That's messed up, right? Thought about it further, there's those two dudes she hires, Horace and Jasper, these guys right here, right? There had to have been some sort of interview process for this job, right? There had to have been a few people who said no. Like, they were like, what do you want us to do? Not 99 puppies. Why don't you just get like 10 big dogs? I feel like you can take care of the coat. Also, she would have gotten caught, guys. Like, she was wearing a Dalmatian coat at the end. They'd be like, 99 puppies, we stole them from London stores. And now over to fashion. Oh, she did it. <laughs> also, these guys just took the job. Like, they heard it and they were like, no, that's cool. Yeah, we'll kill them. All right, don't see that. <laughs> Lastly, this is the final, final thing here. Beauty and the Beast. We like this movie, too? All right. Yes. This one's a little weird. Can anybody name the villain of Gaston, Beauty and the Beast for me? Gaston. No, no, he's not a villain, everybody. All right, does that look like a villain to you? <laughs> you guys seeing this? Not a villain. Let me zoom out for you. That is a victim, okay? Because he has to watch Belle choose this over this. This over this. Okay? That's not okay. The real villain of Beauty and the Beast. Also, by the way, 
when Beast turns into a human, he looks like a weird, creepy <laughs> Michael Bolton guy. Like, that's a bad choice. The real villain of Beauty and the Beast is that witch that cursed Beast in the beginning of the film that you never, ever see again, okay? She comes up to the door. It's the middle of the night. Knocks on the door. A 10-year-old kid answers the door. That's weird to me, right? He's just walking around. <laughs> she goes, it's cold outside. Can I come in? He's like, no, stranger danger. <laughs> just doing whatever kid, any kid does. No. She curses him, turns him into that giant monster beast for no reason, and then curses his entire staff who had nothing to do with saying no to this woman, and they're turned into, like, clocks, lamps, and armoires and shit, and now they have to wait around until he falls in love to be human again. And then, after this happens, she turns into a beautiful woman. She's like, ha-ha, I was beautiful the whole time. Bitch, why didn't you come to the door like that? He probably would have let you in. Which proves another point. She didn't need a place to stay. She was just wandering the countryside waiting for somebody to be an asshole. So fuck that woman. Well, please think about that the next time you watch Beauty and the Beast. Thank you, everybody. Keep it going for a